doing. We are very happy to be here with our brand new project, Pitch Fly Hub. I am Kali, your host at Pitch Fly Talk, Talk Show. Nice to see you guys. Hi Kelvin, um, hi Jenny, how are you? Welcome you all to today's webinar. In this webinar, we'll talk about how merchants should do after the BFCM. We together answer the ultimate question, should we take a rest when the FCM is over? Is it exciting? Oh, and a friendly reminder for everyone, please comment down through our webinar to get our gifts. We have a big plan for you when attending this event. For example, 15, 30 and 50 discount voucher for every page fly paid plan to use forever. Awesome, right? So don't miss this chance and comment below this live stream. Once again, welcome to PageFly Hub. This show is powered by PageFly, number one Shopify page builder app. PageFly helps more than 170,000 merchants to build their stores with various powerful elements, sections, and features. Our mission is to have e-commerce merchants to better their stores by providing a great app to build their website pages and limitless educational content. Bearing that mission in mind, we we'll launch this new series, PageFly Hub. PageFly Hub is a monthly webinar from PageFly, number one Shopify page reader app. In PageFly Hub, we provide educational content, inspiring stories from e-commerce experts to passionate e-commerce merchants. Today's end result is Don't Set It Down After the BFCM, where we talk about what are the steps e-commerce merchants should take after the BFCM? And then we come to the second part in which we would review on search engine optimization and conversion rate optimization of two stores. Today, we are honored to have our SEO expert from PageFly to join us as speaker. Let's welcome Phuc Nguyen. He will give speech about post BFCM strategies. We are having here Phuc Nguyen. He is an SEO specialist at PageFly and I believe that he would have so many interesting insights to share with you guys today. So, let's welcome Phuc to the stage. Uh, thank you, Kali. Uh, it's awesome to be here today. And um, I believe that I got some interesting insights that I can bring to the table. So, let's get to it, So we? Yeah, sure, definitely. When you talk about BSCM, I don't think that BSM doesn't end until you make lifelong customer out of your one-time buyer. So it's a, a bit contradictory to lots of people thinking that what happened in BSM stay in BSM. So how can you keep on providing better uh, customer support and customer experience post BSM? So I want to share with you a story. Panda has been making awesome and cheap guitars like for a long time. Uh, and the sale of electric guitar industry wide have fallen by about third in the last decade. While almost half of uh, Fender sales are to brand new guitars, uh, about 90% uh, of them quit the instrument within a year. I mean, I've been there uh, trying to play the, uh, electric guitar, is not easy at all. So, uh, what do they do? They first they reinforce their understanding of customer. So, they leverage that understanding to uh, provide better experience by having an app called Linda or Fender Plate providing guitar tutorial for their uh, new uh, buyers and new customers. So this is a case of uh, providing a better experience aligned uh, with uh, profit and business flow. Uh, what is the fundamentals of uh, a good customer nurturing strategy? So um, from my point of view is that for them the first one is credibility, the second one is relevant, the third one is uh, multi-channel communication, and the fourth one is strategy and impact. So let's get into each of them. The first one is about credibility. Uh, on which trust does your customer let your message to communicate uh, through the filter and uh, reach live? So it's fairly easy when you when you operate in an e-commerce uh, ecosystem and e-commerce environment, uh, and it's fairly easier to do it with Certify because uh, Certify have like a, a variety of apps that can help you to easily create and add uh, social proof. 
user rating and uh, get the lead that uh, get support your brand. And um, the second one is relevance. Relevance uh, means that saying the right thing at the right time to the right people. So we short relevance equal customization. Uh, should, for example, uh, sending a poorly timed mass email uh, can only trigger your customer this date over your brand. So I would recommend you avoid that. The third one is about multi-channel communication. Uh, multi-channel communication, uh, why do you need it? Because uh, online buyers move seamlessly and quickly across different uh, social media and different online platforms. For example, if you have a huge product on your online store, uh, hop on social media to look uh, for more information about your brand, uh, back to Google and send back to your store, all have within seconds. So how can you catch me? How can you catch me and convince me to come back to your store and buy from yours and buy your product? Uh, the last one is about strategy and impact. So it's fairly uh, fundamental and easy. Uh, you just need to follow the smart model. Your goals and objectives for your social network should be measured in smart, uh, which is uh, specific, uh, specific, uh, measurable, achievable, uh, relevant, and timely. We should move on to the uh, nurturing uh, tactics and strategy that you can use, and uh, these are my personal favorites. So the first one is email marketing. So, uh, uh, so after BSCM, you can you have a lot of information about your customer, and what you do with it can set you apart from your competitors. So there are a few creative approaches you can use. The first one is make you a discount code and gift card. Uh, provide your customer a reason to come back to your store and buy more, and uh, and spending more money on your store. Or you can uh, make sure that your content is highly customized. And uh, I'm not talking about like, content that are slightly different in title and in subject header. I'm talking about emails that ask your customer how is how they experience with your product. Uh, ask them if uh, they anything you can do to make them feel better or to make their uh, to make their purchase uh, is more worthwhile. Uh, if you want a good approach you can use with your marketing efforts, to maybe test your email subject. Uh, header, created and content to, to understand which work and which uh, doesn't work. Uh, make sure that your email is uh, time sensitive. Uh, for example, sending a follow up email two weeks after the purchase is not really time sensitive. Or uh, sending three emails in a row right after the purchase is also not time sensitive. And the last one is create an email pre campaign so people can like, receive, can get, no. Uh, those are the email every day. So it's very easy for them to cross over your emails. So my advice is to create a deep a email quick campaign that uh, slowly convince your customer to come back to your store over the cost of time and uh, over the cost of several emails with, uh, highly, with highly customized content. Uh, so this is a really good example of how, marketing, uh, how email marketing should work. They send an email asking the customer about their experience with the with the app. Uh, this is from the open table, and uh, and they ask for a review. We can strengthen their brand credibility. So this is uh, a very good example that you can uh, incorporate into your email marketing efforts. So the second approach is uh, remarketing ads. So about ninety-eight percent. Of your first time visitor will leave without making a purchase. Yeah. It can sound a bit depressing, right? Uh, but the good thing is that you will have a handful of information that you can that can help you to uh, to follow and to uh, to have a deeper understanding of what they want and uh, what motivates your customer, your potential customer, since they are so close to buying. Mm -hmm. So this is where remarketing can be too handy. You can run remarketing ads on Facebook and Instagram. Setting it up is fairly easy. You can jump on YouTube and uh, learn to set up in a few a couple of minutes. So how? Uh, but the important thing is how you can how to how to understand uh, how remarketing ads work. 
Uh, so let's back to our uh, four fundamentals in the beginning of the, of, the, uh, of the talk. So the first one is just, does your app design credible? If it isn't, uh, if it is it credible, uh, how can you make it look more trustworthy? Uh, you can use that with it, you can use uh, review, you can use uh, base study to, to add social proof to your brand and uh, and urge your customer to urge your audience to click uh, the ad. The second one is uh, relevant. So you have to define, uh, to define where your customer are, uh, which life cycle stage that uh, you want to compare them to work, and create uh, and customize the remote app accordingly. Uh, the third one is about strategy and impact. Make sure that you are that you are mas um, you are measuring the right. Uh, which is including spending, uh, return on ad spending, um, frequency. Frequency is uh, highly important when it comes to Facebook uh, ads remarketing. If your audience uh, sees your ad over three times a day, that means that you are running ineffective advertising. So you want you have to look into that and lower the uh, ad frequency. So that's about remarketing. So uh, pro tip: take advantage of a few ads library. Here you can find hundreds and thousands of, of ads to look into and to learn from your direct competitors to understand how remarketing ads should work, which work, and which uh, doesn't work. So another creative approach you can use is to combine social and email. Uh, the key idea is that you can use social linking that you is that you can use email to grow your social follower. You can use social sharing that use email to enrich and to extend the reach of your messaging to social media platforms. Or you can use social promotion, which is uh, using social to grow your email list and to promote your email marketing efforts. So how can you turn the ideas into reality? So the first one I usually use is to feature Facebook and Twitter with them. Uh, in the email commission message, so that uh, enthusiastic new subscriber can uh, can uh, find a way to connect with me on social media. Uh, you can add a Facebook and Twitter button to your preference center for recipient who uh, rather say rather stay in touch over social, or you can listen for keywords that are used uh, by your audience. Tool like Avario or Messenger.io can help you with it. And then send segmented email to 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 those that use the keywords, or you can watch uh, who your follow or follow, and uh, use the content interest to enrich your email marketing content. Another topic is to uh, making use of pure URL. Pure URL is basically a uh, uh, personalized URL. A customer types your customer URL into their browser and they are taken to a landing page that customized for them only. So this is a high level of tactics when it comes to customization and personalization. Uh, you, have to, you have to use uh, a few tools to help you uh, create a, few, a personalized URL. Easy, easyproach.com or Marketo are my favorite. The last one is about uh, thinking mobile. You have to think about how your how you can improve a mobile in the whole overall experience. Uh, make sure that all of your nurturing efforts are mobile friendly and mobile responsive. Uh, including your email and your landing page. Uh, that, that can ensure your customer can, can see and interact with your nurturing emails and nurturing content in the best way possible. Uh, tools like PageFly can help you uh, create a uh, mobile landing page is easily and effortlessly. So that's all from my part. Thank you so much, Paul, for a very informative and interesting sharing. I do believe that customer experience is the key to any customer nurturing strategies, and I can't agree with you more. And uh, while you are giving your speech, I received some questions, so let's pick this one from Helen Howard. So she asked, I am a Shopify seller, and my resources, you know, the money I've got to invest in my business is short. Sometimes I have to choose between invest whether acquiring or nurturing. I find it challenging to decide which one should be invested in. 
Can you tell me which one is more important? I mean, acquiring new customers or nurturing the old ones? Uh, thank you for your interesting question. Mm -hmm. uh, that's a classic question of every business. And it's a bit difficult to uh, point out what uh, will be the ultimate answer for this question. Since it uh, entirely depends on your on, on which phase are you in. So like if you are in the, the very first phase of your way of building a uh, so your first online business uh, and charge make your brand visible, uh, is this to me is this more more knowledge, more crucial to invest in customer acquisition. However, nurturing will only be my choice when I advise every business uh, to have their to, when I advise every business uh, about their go to strategy. So there's a formula called uh, CLV, customer lifetime value. Uh, you might have seen this term on some marketing book. Uh, I read from the Marketing Fundamental by Philip Kohler. So that formula, uh, I believe, uh, plays a significant role to answer your question. CLV equal average uh, value of sales times uh, number of transactions and time retention time period. So when you have a new customer, you might increase the average uh, value of sale and if they actually purchase, uh, but when you know your old one, so uh, so when you have a new customer, naturally you will increase the average value of sale uh, if they have actually purchased. But when you know your the old one, you can increase the value of two other factors, the number of transaction and retention time period, therefore making the most out of one customer that comes to your store. And uh, we we have done that uh, when an old customer feels happy about your service and your product. So they have you to do the marketing process of acquiring by recommend by recommending you to uh, by recommending your brand to others. So that's what we call a uh, word of mouth effect. And you're creating two words with just one soul, with a uh, great customer experience and great customer service. So at that time, we also focus on nurturing more than acquiring by right? we focus on customer support. Uh, we we try to do, uh, to have a better uh, health center and we launch new campaign to serve our existing customer to uh, for example we have a reconvert campaign where we uh, reconvert their pages on other platform to pay flag and have them use some awesome page that they should have but they don't have to do any of the work we have used the testing for health center to identify what are the problems when customers searching for our app and solution on our health center so Phuc will stay here with us a little longer to deliver his feedback on SEO, search engine optimization of a store. Uh, I, I won't let you guys uh, wait for longer, so here we come. Okay, so let's do a quick review of Pepperbee.co. So Pepperbee.co is an online store selling dog and cat accessory and jewelry. So let's look into the overall performance of the website first. So from what I can see here, uh, the store currently has no organic traffic and I would recommend you that you start writing blog posts. Uh, there are huge pools of dog related topics that you can write on. For example, this one. Uh, dog puzzle toys with around 10,000 search volume per month. Uh, you can use Ahrefs or answer the public for more keyword ideas. For example, You can get a whole pool of ideas for your blog post in a second. Uh, and uh, so my favorite tactics would be to write a lot of blog posts and then link these blog posts to the relevant product page. Uh, this is the standard uh, link building tactic. Uh, so once you start making, uh, so once you start ranking for the blog post, you can uh, start ranking for your product page as well. Uh, so this is a a simplified version of the of the structure that you that you might want to use. For example, you can see that uh, to pick uh, A, B, C, D, and E, and F is the relevant product page. So by structure your product page and your blog post this way, you can start ranking for both. Uh, so I have also done a basic audit of the whole website, and so far so good. Uh, indexability and mobile experience uh, are fairly good. There is no serious on-page issue. 
However, I would recommend you to uh, following a few, uh, a few of my favorite uh, approach in optimizing your your on-page SEO. So the first one is to use a schema markup. Uh, a schema markup is uh, can have your web page look uh, a bit a little bit more trustworthy, and it certainly look uh, more appealing to uh, Google user, and uh, it easier when you when you're using Certify because Certify have uh, uh, <coughs> on, uh, so there are, there are a few Certify apps that can help you to uh, easily add schema markup to your store easily, and um. The second tactics that I uh, usually use is to uh, only, re only remember to optimize my key on page element. Uh, for example, in uh, title, uh, URL, and meta description. So you see, I use this tool to control the length and the uh, the character of the title, URL, and meta description. Uh, so you can see a a benchmark right here. Thanks to for your inspiring speech and profound analysis on Pet With Me. We also want to express our great gratitude towards Team Pet With Me for signing up to the review. We hope your business could be better and better. Next, we'll have Nick Tracy Nguyen. She's one of the most experienced marketers in PageFly team on CRO Design. Today, we'll have a special section where she will analyze the store we would love to review as many stars as possible, but due to a time limit, we can only serve one lucky star. Here we go, Tracy and Zorali store. Hi everyone, it's Tracy from Pitchfly Team, and it's been a great honor to be here today in the very first episode of Pitchfly Hub. And I hope that what I am about to share to you uh, can be somewhat beneficial to you guys at the very first um, phase of starting out as a uh, Shopify online store. So we all know that the way that we build our stores can tremendously affect our sales and overall customer experience. And um, today I will review a store based on how we can optimize our site to boost conversion rate. And uh, the store I'm going to review today is Zorali. Zorali creates eco-innovative outdoor gear and apparel renewing the human spirit in the wonder and beauty of the wild. To be honest, I was very impressed when first browsing through this store and uh, I do believe that you will be amazed too. So first we will head to homepage to see what it looks like. So first browsing through the stores, I can see that they have very bespoke imagery and design. Uh, they use very consistent uh, tone and colors uh, throughout the site create a very earthy and environment uh, friendly vibe which um, I can grasp what their stores are selling and what is their uh, motto is when first looking at the store. What I have noticed about this hero section is that you have used a slideshow for the hero banner. Uh, however, I can see that the pan pagination is in black and it's quite small for visitors to uh, locate if they want to uh, uh, slide through your uh, slideshow. So I would suggest that you would turn this um, pagination to uh, some bright colors contrastive to uh, the background so that people can easily locate it. Next is, um, I really like the uh, hover effect for the collection section. However, with the CTA, uh, the purpose of the call to action button is to um, catch the attention of the visitors. However, in this section, as you can see that when I hover into the uh, CTA, um, the background turns transparent. So it's very hard for me to see the CTA. So um, I would recommend changing the background color of the CTA button when you hover um, uh, to it. Okay, so that is the hero section. Next, there's one thing more I noticed in the homepage is that in this journal section, uh, the read more button is not aligned to each other. 
and uh, to in order to create a more consistency uh, between the layout, you should have all the uh, these buttons like load more or read more aligned to each other when there are in uh, columns. So that's all about homepage, and now we'll move to collection page to see what you have there. Okay, it's great that you have uh, the collection title with the subheading so that the visitors can understand what is um, what is the collection is about. Um, going through the collection, I can see that you have used um, you have inserted reviews, and I think that this um, this would help immensely uh, in terms of uh, building your credibility to your customer. And I also like the fact that you have all the products in very clear display. I can uh, clearly see the materials, the colors, the high quality images uh, totally express um, those characters. One thing that I can recommend to you is that you can use second hover images as uh, so that visitors can better understand um, how your products would look like when, uh, when wearing on. Uh, another thing that I notice is that you are using endless scrolling, which means that you uh, put all the products into one collection page like this without any indication for to load more or uh, any pagination to turn on to different pages. Consider using load more feature instead of endless scrolling like this or pagination because um, as we all know a lot of Shopify merchants or online store owners they tend to use pagination however uh, there's a drawback of uh, pagination is that customers cannot compare if they want to um, uh, compare the products from this page to another page so that's it for collection page now we'll move to a product page to review First, entering the product page, I can see that you have used um, swatches as colors to indicate available variant. And I think that is a brilliant idea so that um, visitors can uh, fully understand um, how many colors you have or um, their options available. And also, I noticed a very good layout of um, uh, product images that show that display the product in. Uh, all angles. This would uh, provide a very comprehensive um, visualization for the customers when they are viewing your store. Regarding the product description, I can see that there is a great combination of bullet points and text blocks. This helps the visitors to better understand the product without having to read too much information. However, I don't see any refund or shipping information in this product page except in the footer uh, which I think is very important when they are viewing your product specifically like this they are, it's like um, their almost uh, approach to the purchase um, stage but they are not sure how their product would be shipped or um, if there's any problems with the product how can they uh, get a refund or return so I think that it should be displayed in a, an easy to read spot in the product page. Next, I will move to page speed of your store. I checked your page speed on page speed insights of, from Google and you can also check that too. And as you can see here, the result is not very high for mobile responsiveness and desktop score. The main factors that affect your page speed is the um, JavaScript in your theme and I would suggest c contacting with your theme provider and ask how you can uh, optimize the, um, the speed with um, the provided theme code. Uh, so these are all of my opinions and thoughts about Zorali store. And I hope that these can, um, can be helpful for you guys. So now I will give the floor back to our host, Kelly, to continue with our webinar. Thanks so much, Tracy, for your sharing. And while you're delivering your speech, your review, 
uh, I have received so many questions from our audiences. So I I'll pick the I'll pick uh, one question from Andy. Um, so he asked, um, I really like this section. It is practical and has me a lot to design a page that looks professional, but this only happens in this webinar. Thank you very much, Andy, for your questions. Good news for you is that the story review session will be taking place quickly. If you guys want to get feedback on your store, you can join our private group, uh, PageFly Shopify landing page app, where we can live stream every Thursday to review our Shopify stores. You can sign up via our list. We will comment the link down below and be ready to receive constructive comments every week. So what do you think about our guest speaker's answer? Great, right? It's sad to announce that we have run out of time and won't be able to go over any other questions. If your question is not answered yet, we will answer them in the comment section below. All webinars in our community are created for your benefits. So please let us know what you want to discuss next and we will try to implement them in a future episode of Pitch by Hub. Please leave us a comment. Hope and Tracy, once again, I would like to thank you for coming and sharing with us today. And thank you, Pet with me and Zora Lee for partnering with us in this show. To our audiences, thank you all for hanging out with us and see you next time. Wish you a wonderful Christmas and Happy New Year. One final reminder, please stay tuned for the second episode of Pitch Fly Hub.